All right, welcome to this episode. What I'm going to be doing is just explaining uh, the ins and outs of a standard YLAA York um, water chiller control panel. Basically what the buttons do, how to access uh, certain parameters and programming uh, for service or commissioning or, or if you just have general knowledge, if you take care of a product in one of your buildings. Uh, like this is a pretty standard uh, York board. You're going to come across YLAs everywhere and even the heat pump uh, units that, we, that um, York sells, they have these same boards. Um, but when you open up the panel, it, just to become familiar with um, what, the, what the board is doing, um, everything has a status button at the top. You can always go back, take a look at the status. That's going to tell you if the unit is running, which unit's running, how many compressors, um, and so on. If it has a fault, that's where it's going to register right off the bat. Um, the next button is the operating uh, data button. Currently, this, this board I've taken out of a chiller I've put into electrobox, electrical box just for testing and training purposes. So right now, there's no sensors hooked up to this board inside. Um, and so the operating data just comes up nil, like, you know, you're leaving chilled water is minus 19. It's so with no sensors, it has no information. But general operating data will tell you what the refrigerant pressures are doing, uh, temperatures, and so on. Um, the next button is the print. I'm going to do a, a show, a different uh, show on that. So right now, you need a few things to hook up to this board and enable to enable yourself to be able to print off fault history. Um, but that's going to be in another module. Okay, so the next one's the history. So if you want to come and you're doing a service or, or you're doing some maintenance, you want to always check the history and just see what it's been doing. Um, Start with the number one, you press enter. Currently this one's empty, so it hasn't had any, any mysterious faults. Um, now here's something, if you ever want to check the software on this board, because sometimes uh, software gets updated, uh, sometimes there's glitches in the software, and so they send out new software, it can be, it can be updated uh, with a SIM card that gets plugged into the board, and you can update um, the new software. So if you ever want to check which software this is running, you just press the down button, and it'll come up with a number. It's a C.M99.16.14 um, build 41. So that's the software it's currently running. So if anybody, if you ever phone in and you, you know over the phone you're talking to somebody in the phone, they ask you what the software is. That's how you would find that. All right. So the next part, we'll go up to the set point button. So currently, if you hit the set point once, this is for local control mode, meaning that the the board is locally controlling the chiller and it's not being remotely controlled. So this would be the local set point of 9 and a range of 2.2. Um, if you hit the set button again, it will take you to the remote set point range. Now the remote set point range, um, you'll see what uh, the BMS is doing or the, the, uh, the building automated system um, is doing uh, with temperature. All right, that's who it gets to adjust that. Once that's pushed, you can't really adjust that. Um, they do it from their end. Now, if you push it again, it goes through another little set point. This is, this is for a remote uh, temp reset. Uh, again, that's something else that some factories use to be able to control or adjust the temperature on their chiller products. Um, and then it goes into a bunch of other parameters. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, next one is just the schedule, advanced day. Normally, it's just like any other time clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you can, you can actually put your start time and your start stop time, and that'll be your schedule for the chiller. Again, a lot of time it's hooked up to you know, a building automated services system that will control the time clock on that. Um, and then we're going to skip program for a second. We're going to come over to the options button. So options takes you through a, a bunch of different things. You, usually you set this up once during commissioning, but you can use it for a number of different things like resetting faults. So display English, English, you know, display language is English. You can actually choose a number of different languages. It just goes for on forever, but stick to the English. Um, system one, system two, switch. So if I have a problem with one or the other systems, I can turn off one you know, currently system one switches on, system two switches off. You know, if there's a problem with system two, system one can run and I can work on system two. 
vice versa. Or I can switch both of them off. If I want to turn it off for some reason and do some maintenance, don't want it to run, I can do that. Press the enter button, keep going. You want to always check this. Chilled liquid, right now it's set for water, but if you had an application where you had, say, you're, you're cooling down fruit and you're running glycol, well, then you would set it for glycol because that changes the suction pressures and so. Um, and moving on, you got local or remote mode. Again, it depends on what you're doing with the chiller and how it's set up with uh, where it's installed. Control mode, return liquid or leaving liquid. I prefer the, the leaving liquid control myself. Display units, SI, Imperial, you know. Uh, lead lag control, automatic or your choice. Uh, manual override. If you want to test something, you could you could test it by putting this into manual override. But again, uh, after about five minutes or three to five minutes, it goes right back to being disabled and it goes right back to the mode that this is currently running, like local. Uh, current feedback. If you had some current transducers monitoring the compressor or the incoming line, um, you could set that up. Most of these. Uh, YIAs don't have that. Soft start, if you had a soft start on it, you could program that in there, tell you, tell you if it had one. Uh, and then unit type liquid chiller, this one here because the software hasn't been updated. Some of these ones you have your choice of heat pump or liquid chiller, but this one hasn't had the upgrade in the software so it's just liquid chiller. Um, you can change your refrigerant around if you're running a different refrigerant system. Um, just by pushing the arrows up and down, you can change your version. Flash card update. That's how you update the software. So if I had the SD card, I'd plug it in there. I would come in here and I could go, yeah, update, and it would update itself. External EVAP pump, yay or nay. Hot gas bypass currently has none, you know. In order for us to set that, we have to go into the programming menu, which I'm going to show you next. Data log to flash card off. So it has a data log. Uh, so if you were doing a software update, you have an SD card with software and you can update it. You take that SD card out, you can use this another SD card, which is blank, put it in there, and you can turn on your data log. And so it basically takes a snapshot of this thing every 10 seconds of whatever the system's doing and it logs it onto that SD card. And I mean, if you get an 8 gig card or a 10 gig card, it's good for, I think it's something like 13 months. And, it, and you can basically take that card out, put it in your computer, you have 13 months of running data to look at if you're trying to solve problems. Program mode. All right, so once we get into program mode, if you hit program and then press enter, you can go directly into just checking where your discharge pressure cutout is and you can adjust it by pushing the up and down arrow. Moving on, you press the enter, uh, suction pressure cutout, you can change that. You press, keep moving on, your ambient temperature cutout, this one's set for minus 17.8. Um, you're leaving liquid temperature cutout, 2.2, pretty standard. Anti-recycle timer, 600 seconds, you can lower that down to whatever you want it. Fan control on pressure. Um, Say, say the fans don't want to start until 24.8 bar and their fan differential is 5.5. So you can adjust all that as you want. If you're commissioning and this thing has you know 10 compressors, this is where you do it. Total number of compressors, six, but I can go if I have one that has four on each system or you know whatnot, five on each system, you can do that. Um, system one number of fans, you know, if system number one has four fans and system number two has three, you can adjust that. Um, you can change your remote unit ID. You can, you can basically give your unit an ID number, which we'll get into the, the backnet. I'll just show you how to do the backnet um, to access it because I've already done a module on backnet. Um, and then it goes into a bunch of other stuff. So have a play. The best thing is just to get in there, have a play, and see what it does. But just to know where you can change your, your cut-in, cut-outs is very important. So going back to the status, now we're going to go into the program button. So if you go into program and you go up, up, down, down, enter, 
Now you can enter basically um, all the little bits and pieces I really enjoy. Like if I'm working on it, on in this unit, and it's got a problem, and I want to test a few things, like the liquid line solenoid on system one. I can just make my way through it, and by pushing the arrow up and down, I can energize it, and I can turn it on, and I can turn it off. Um, you can check the status. Of course, the compressors aren't going to be running because the service switch is off. Hot gas bypass valve, I want to make sure that's working. I can turn it on, I can turn it off. Um, and the better part, too, is like when you're doing maintenance, you want to make sure these fans are working. You can actually come in and test each fan by turning them on and off, you know, and checking your amperage on and off. Going through, the same thing for system two fans. EVAP heater, if you're somewhere really cold and your, your big uh, chiller barrel is being protected by a heater um, or your braze plate is being protected by a heater, you can check that by turning it on and off, checking your amperage. Um, alarm status, you want to check to make sure your alarm's working on the BMS side of things, you can turn that on and off. Create a fault. System 2 has the same thing, alarm status. EVAP pump status says it's off. You know, it checks it. You can turn it on. Hot gas, and it goes all through the same thing for system two. Okay, this is interesting too. If you want to test your, if you've got electronic expansion valves, you can test them by going to your system one EEV output and just arrowing up, and you can open it to 20%, 25%, whatever percent you want. System two is the same. Condenser fan speed, if you've got a VSD drive on those condenser fans, you can adjust that and make them start up by adjusting how fast you want them to go. Data logging, if I want to be data logging, this is where I set it from, okay? So I can, I can say yes or no. Currently it says one is on, so it's data logging. Yeah, every 10 seconds, taking a photo of of system one, system two, and putting it onto that um, that little SD card, and uh, it's good information, especially if you have little problems and hiccups that are occurring in the middle of the night, and and, and they're bugging the customer. Uh, again, if you want to change your refrigerant, this is where you want to do it. You can go through R22, R47C, R410A. Standard fan control. You can change your fan controls around. A lot of these settings are going to be done when the unit's commissioned, so they're not something that you generally need to play with, but if you were upgrading your unit and buying some, some new equipment, some VSD fans for it, I mean, this is where you'd want to change those settings from. Now, System 1 Fan Test, this will start all the fans, but sometimes I like to, I like to start them one by one. So I can get the, you know, the amperage draw off each one. I can hear them and see what they sound like. But if you just want to test them all, you can just test them all one by one for system one, system two. And it just goes on. You can change your expansion valve. You can have thermostatic or electronic. Remote temperature disabled. You can enable it. And so on and so on. All right. And so... Finally, I mean, the only thing left is the clock. The clock's pretty easy. You get in there, um, and these things really, uh, they're simple. You just, you just get in there and set the date and set the time. Because if you don't set this to the proper date, um, all your commissioning data or your fault history data, it won't be right. It won't say the right date, the right time. You won't know when it's happening. So that's actually one of the most important things to set is just set up the clock so if there is a fault, we know that you know it's happening at the right time and day, and gives you an idea. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Like I say, the backnet settings pretty easy to access as well. You press the program button, you go down, 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 enter, and you can get into your backnet um, addresses and set this up for the backnet for the for the, for the building. Again, I've done a module on that already uh, with a real chiller. Um, if you can just check my other videos, you'll find it there, and um, and it's pretty, it's okay. It shows you what you're doing. If you're commissioning and you're a little bit stuck on figuring out how to get the address to work, it's a good video for that. All right, um, and that's it in a nutshell. Like I say, uh, keep checking back. I'm going to do a video on the printing port. A lot of people have problems getting that to work, uh, and there's a few little things you can do or, or things you can watch for that that. Um, make your life a little bit easier 
All right, and so I'll be doing another video on that one uh, in time. All right, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. Happy hunting.